All right, we're back. Uh, John Bradshaw in the studio with us. We're doing a series of conversations, and I, I'd love to go more and longer with you, but, you know, I know everybody's got some time constraints, and you got to get back to the hotel. But I, I promise you, I think John and I are going to do some more things together in the future. I'd really love that. Yes. And um, you you gave a talk, uh, it was yesterday that I had, had a chance to sit into some of the talks that you were doing at the U.S. General Training and Institute for Integral Development Conference, and you mentioned this poem, mm -hmm. and it stuck with me, and I pulled out my copy of Creating Love and found the poem, and uh, I, I asked you to do it, but you want to set it up. You want to talk about why this poem is so important in this book, Creating Love, and as it relates to virtue. Absolutely. So go ahead. The second part of the book on virtue is that you've got to have your own, Carl Jung once said the most damaging thing to any child is the unlived life of the parents, uh -huh. and that if you've got a father with a, a you know a, a life that he feels uh, he's disappointed in like I, in, in my workshops I'll say imagine your parents across from me I give you back your disappointed life I'm sorry you had it but this is covert abuse this is called the emotional abuse of playing baseball with your dad wow, wow. and a guy named Craig Sanchez sent that to me and what I mean the kid thinks he's the luckiest kid in the world because yeah. his dad is practicing with him and he bought him a major league glove. So when you re as you read the poem, you begin to realize... Mm -hmm. um, so this you call covert yeah, abuse. It, it's covert because okay. the child says, well, none of these other kids' dads yeah. play with them four times a Which week. Which was my case. You know, my father just, you know, I'd want him to play ball. Never, you no. know. So I felt kind of abused in abstentia, you know. Right, and there are plenty of good fathers that play ball with their kids, and it's great. Mm -hmm. But this is a case where a guy's disappointed life is trying to make his son an extension of himself. Okay, that's the key here. That's the key. It and that happens a lot, right? And the kid thinks, I'm so lucky to have a father who loves me like this. This is not love at all. Years later, we'll have to help this kid understand that he's being abused, and use is abuse. All right, I'm going to read this and then we'll wrap it up here All with right. John Bradshaw. Uh, titled, This Something Settled Matter in His Heart, Craig Sanchez. It's from Hi Hamlet. Hamlet, okay. A quote from Hamlet. Here's my dad. He's waiting for me outside, waiting to play where the broad side street runs quietly along our flat roof corner house. The house where pumpkin orange brick peeks from beneath the crumbling white stucco. Fireflies are beginning to volley in salvo across the summer evening, no man's land. There is a hush. It is as if the knight has taken a deep breath and is holding it. He's got a baseball in one hand. He whacks it into his glove over and over and over again. It makes a clear, sharp, snapping sound like a whip. Suddenly, he rocks back and launches the ball straight up into the deepening gloom. Up, up it goes, up past the lamppost, streaking up between the telephone wires and tree branches, up higher than the three-story apartment building next door. Will it strike a bird? Catch it, catch it, catch it, he bellows. I look up, craning my neck as far back as it will go. My feet are suddenly strangers to the ground. They swear they've never met before. These toes, this asphalt, I can't let my dad down. I'll catch it, I will, but I can't see it. Two years from now, I'll finally get some glasses, but tonight all I can do is squint into the darkness. Will it ever come down? Ever throbs my heart. I can see nothing, but I can smell something. I can smell the smooth new leather of my bright orange baseball glove as it slides around on my hand. It has a life of its own. It's a grown-up glove, a professional one, because my dad wants me to get used to the real thing from the beginning no kid gloves for me. Oh, no. He's a swell dad to get it for me. He even says so. I'm five years old. I have to squeeze all four fingers into the four-finger hole just to keep it from falling off. My thumb is lost somewhere in a black hole. Tom Thumb's cave, I suppose. I run around in circles, hoping that somehow, perhaps by being in perpetual motion, I will hear the ball when it comes down and be able to catch it at the last second. I was, must never let my dad down, not once. I'm his big boy. He wants me to be a baseball player just like 
He would have been if it hadn't been for that bad break. Did it hurt? Dad, that bad break? He's going to make a sacrifice and make sure I make the big leagues. What a dad. The ball comes down and hits me on the head. Is there no hole for me, small as I am, to crawl into? You should have been born a girl. My father never played with me. Why did I waste all that money buying you the glove? You're such a sissy. I should have bought you a skirt instead. I fight back the trebly shaming tears. Why do I have to cry now of all times? I can feel the pain from the bump on my head all the way to my heart. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Give me another chance, Dad, please. I won't do it again. I promise. Please, Dad, please. All right, all right. One more chance, he says, a smile creeping across his mouth. But concentrate this time. Don't fail me. Once more, the ball flies up into the void. Run from it, birds. Don't get hit. Use your white wings to be safe. I'm so lucky to get a second chance. What a dad. I still can't see the ball, but I'll catch it somehow. I have to. And, and you end this, John. When we grow up mystified, we spend our whole life trying to catch a ball we cannot see. Yeah, I mean, there is a incredible example. This kid can't see. Uh -huh. His father's had this great big uh, break of his leg or something, so he couldn't play major league ball. So he's going to make this kid a major leaguer, and he's shaming him into oblivion. And, and the kid keeps saying, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky to have a dad like this. It's what we call covert abuse. Yeah. You and know, that's why that parent has to clear that up uh -huh. so they don't start screwing up their child with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's probably common, I, I forget what you called it just a little earlier, that we're trying to live out what our failures were through our children, and we put a lot of pressure on them to succeed because if they succeed, then we've succeeded. Not like that, huh? No, no, it's not like that. And it can even be, you know, deeper and more covert. But it was Jung who said it. He said, the most damaging thing to a child is the unlived life of the parents. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, many parents are, are, are unconscious about it. It's why in the book, uh, reclaiming virtue, I say you've got to recover your own innocence. You've got to get into the authentic present mm -hmm. if you're going to be virtuous. Nobody's going to do it perfectly, but if you're going to be virtuous, and and, uh, and that thing you said read about Aristotle, uh, the whole idea of virtue is full self-actualization. That I want to be the person I was meant to be. And, and in reclaiming virtue, like uh, your past writings and teachings, uh, you, you brought up the other day about the shadow and our wounds. Yeah. We got like a minute and a half to close out here. You want to talk about how important it is to uh, clear those wounds and understand those wounds and the two basic wounds of, uh, in, what do you call it, um, suffocation and uh, well, abandonment? Yeah, but, that some of us, like I was set up to be my mother's surrogate husband because there was no father there. So my wound is more like enmeshment, enmeshment. or suffocation or being used, whereas many others are abandoned. You know, uh, a parent abusing you is abandoning you. Uh, a little girl being incested is being abandoned by the very one that should be protecting her. So those wounds... Uh, we, we create we create defenses. We can even create a fantasy bond and make up a parent. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, so that's one of the ways that it goes unconscious. And then the other way, Carl Jung just called it the shadow, but it's the stuff I don't like about myself or the stuff that I've been taught is wrong. And our true self, our soul self, will repress itself in order to survive because deceit, we carry that from our animal heritage. Mm. So we learn to survive in the family, yeah. but often with a false self. Yeah. And it may take us a lot of years later, hopefully, to find out who we really are. All right. I, I thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. We're going to talk more about this book here. You and I will get maybe some phone going here or, get, or do it live oh. in studio for part two. But in the meantime, uh, you know, I suggest you don't wait. Here it is, John Bradshaw, Reclaiming Virtue might be kind of a manual for living your life from now to the end in a much better way. Thanks. Thank you, Alan. You're welcome. Thank you for listening and watching. <laughs>